Hi everybody, welcome to this crucial playlist covering labour markets. Right from the start, get into a labour market mindset where you know who demands labour? Firms do, employers do. Who supplies labour? Individuals do. Where the demand for labour equals the supply of labour, what do we get? We get an equilibrium wage rate and an equilibrium quantity of workers. So know the crucial differences between product markets and labour markets. In this video, we're going to focus on the demand for labour for an individual firm and marginal revenue product theory. Now, let's start with this definition in red. What does the demand curve for labour for an individual firm show? It shows us how many workers firms will hire at any given wage rate over a given period of time. And that makes total sense. That's exactly what a demand curve for labour should tell us. At a given wage rate, how many workers will a firm employ? So when we know how to draw it, that's what this demand curve should tell us. It's also important for you guys to remember that the demand for labour is a derived demand. It comes from the demand for goods and services. Only when the demand for goods and services is high will labour demand be high. And that implies that firms hire workers not because they get a thrill out of it, not because they enjoy doing it. They employ workers because there is a need for them to produce goods and services. Firms will base their demand decisions for labour on marginal revenue product. Marginal revenue product. The extra revenue generated when an additional worker is hired. That's how firms base their demand decisions for labour. So that means, one, you need to understand what MRP is, and crucially, you need to know how to calculate it. And down here we can see an equation for MRP. Marginal revenue product is equal to marginal physical product, that's just marginal product as we've learned it before, multiplied by marginal revenue. So knowing how to calculate it is key, and now we'll go to this table where we'll look to make those calculations. Let's understand where this table comes from. This is data for an individual firm, and this firm is in the short run, meaning it is experiencing the law of diminishing marginal returns. That explains the figures in column 2 and column 3. In column 2 we've got total physical product, basically total product, and in column 3 we've got marginal product. And if you look at marginal product, you see how initially it increases, then the law of diminishing returns sets in and the figures start to decrease. This firm is in the short run constrained by fixed factors of production. We are also assuming that this firm is operating in perfect competition, meaning this firm is a price taker, hence why uh, the prices are 20 across the board. That means that the price is equal to average revenue, but crucially is equal to marginal revenue. So to calculate marginal revenue product, we take the price, i.e. the marginal revenue, and we times it by the marginal product of each individual worker, and that gives us the MRP for each individual worker. So let's assume this entire table is in pounds. So we've got 20 pounds times 6, that's 120 for the first worker, MRP. MRP for the second worker, 20 times 8, 160. For the third worker, 20 times 10, 200, etc. So that explains the red figures, the marginal revenue product figures calculated using this equation down below. Right, so firms base their demand decisions on MRP. So if we plot an MRP curve, we can learn a lot more about the demand for labour. So on the right, we are now going to plot the marginal revenue product curve for an individual firm. And when plotting that, we have wage on the y-axis. Remember, we're looking at labour markets. So wage on the y-axis with output also on the y-axis and the quantity of workers on the x-axis. So when we plot our MRP points like this, we get a curve that looks like this. That, guys, is our MRP Curve, the marginal revenue product curve for an individual firm. But crucially now, that is the demand curve for labour, right there. Why is that? Because look, it fits our definition of what the demand curve for labour should show. At any given wage rate, how many workers should a firm employ? That's exactly what this MRP curve is showing us, right? Why is it shaped like this? It's shaped like this because of the law of diminishing marginal returns. The first worker, second worker and third worker all were bringing in more revenue than the previous worker. You see, MRPs were increasing for these workers. The second worker brought in more revenue than the first. The third worker brought in more revenue than the second. MRP was increasing. Why? Because um, specialization gains, as we've learned before, can occur for these three workers 
and there is excess land and excess capital that these workers can use up when they are employed. Hence, they are more productive than the previous one, which is why MRP increases for the first three workers. But then, after we hire our third worker, the fourth, fifth and sixth worker suffer from lower productivity. That's because the constraints of our fixed factors of production of capital and land start to become an issue and individual productivity starts to decrease, therefore reducing marginal revenue product for these workers. So the reason the MRP curve is shaped like that is because of the law of diminishing marginal returns. So you need to make sure, one, you can calculate MRP and two, you can draw it. You know it's equal to the demand curve because it tells us at any given wage rate how many workers a firm will employ, but you also need to understand why it's shaped this way. So, the wage rate, let's understand why I've said the wage rate is 60 here. We're assuming here that uh, firms are operating in a perfectly competitive labour market, meaning that they are wage takers. They've got no control over the wage that they can pay their employees. They have to take the wage rate set in the industry labour market and give that to all of its workers. Hence why the wage rate is constant at 60 for every worker. So, if the MRP curve is the demand curve, i.e. at any given wage rate it tells us the number of workers a firm will employ, with a wage rate at 60, which is over here somewhere, how many workers should this firm employ? It should employ five workers at a wage rate of 60 pounds. So that's the wage rate there. And if you think about it, that wage rate is equal to the marginal cost of labour. The wage rate, because it's constant, is the marginal cost of labour for this firm. Every time it hires another worker, it pays an extra £60, and that is constant. Hence, it's the marginal cost of labour. So this MRP curve can also give us some extra information. It can give us a condition for... Uh, firms to maximize the revenue brought in from its workers. So down here we can actually understand that firms will hire workers up until the marginal revenue product is equal to the wage. Let's understand that. Let's understand that. The wage rate here is 60 and we know the efficient number of workers to hire is 5. Why at a wage rate of 60 does it make no sense to hire more than 5 workers? Well if this firm hired a 6th worker you can see that cost Right? Marginal cost will be higher than the marginal revenue. This worker will cost more to the firm than it will bring in, than they will bring in via additional revenue. It makes no sense to hire this worker. This firm will lose out if it did. So it's pointless hiring beyond where MRP equals W or where MRP equals the marginal cost of labour. What about employing workers below five at a wage rate of 60? Well, that makes no sense either because all of these workers are bringing in more revenue to the firm than cost. Revenue is higher than cost, so by hiring another worker, a firm can actually bring in more revenue than cost. A firm can maximise its benefit by hiring more workers, up until where the marginal revenue product is equal to the marginal cost, or the marginal revenue product is equal to the wage. That's where it makes no sense to hire more workers, because cost will be higher than revenue. Before that, it makes no sense to stop, because revenue is higher than cost, firms can bring in more revenue if they hired more workers. So we can also get this key condition here, that firms, to make an efficient employment decision, should keep hiring workers up until the marginal revenue product is equal to the wage, i.e. equal to the marginal cost of labour. That explains the demand curve for labour for an individual firm. Hopefully now that makes total sense. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video where we, we critique marginal revenue product theory and we look at the demand curve for labour in the total labour market. I will see you then. Thanks for watching.